All right, so we have the man and his wife. They're still innocent. They're still from that innocent state um, of Genesis 2.25. We have this serpent that has entered the, the picture, Satan, indwelling the serpent. You have this discourse between the man and the woman where the serpent is creating doubt. He's contradicting the word of God and he's denying um, the Lord's goodness. And now we get into the actual event, the fall of man from the grace of God. We're in Genesis chapter three, verse six. And it says, so when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was a delight to the eyes and that the tree was to be desired to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate it. She also gave some to her husband who was with her and he ate it. When you look at this, we see that Eve was tempted in three areas. And these are the same three areas that John, the apostle, warns about in 1 John chapter 2, verse 16, which says, For all that is in the world, the desires of the flesh, the desires of the eyes, and the pride of life, it is not from the Father, but is from the world. You have the desires or the lust of the flesh, Right? The woman saw the tree was good for food. Um, that the food was physically appealing. It looked good. Oh man, it so looks tasty. It looks juicy and good. All right, It looked, looked good for food. Um, the lust of the eyes. It was a delight to the eyes. You know, not only did it look good for food, did it look juicy and tasty, but it was also beautiful. To look at this was a fruit that was like oh that's so beautiful right like you know you have people with the fruit bowls that have all the plastic fruit for decorations you know it would have been like i would you put that fruit in the middle of the table and that would be my decoration beautiful to look at and then you have the pride of life it was desired to be to make one wise it would be mentally transforming right if i eat this fruit Man, I'm, see, because that, that serpent guy over there, he told me that it would make me wise. It's going to change my mind. Um, eating this fruit would give her something that she did not possess. This knowledge, this wisdom. And through the, the cunning influence of the devil, um, Eve took the forbidden fruit. Uh, touching it didn't cause her to be separated from God. It wasn't touching that caused her spiritual death, right? It was only when she ate it that that, that separation entered in. Um, there's a, a rabbinic um, teaching that, that s simply states that when Eve touched the, the fruit and she didn't die immediately, the serpent, you know, went on to push her to actually eat it. You know, there's a little bit more discourse in here that we don't see. That's rabbinic tradition. I'm going to go with what the word of God says, that Eve took of it of herself. And then that's when she ate it. Um, and then after she ate, now we have the fall of Adam. She gave some to her husband who was with her and he ate. Notice that. Um, Eve essentially became to Adam what the serpent was to her. The serpent was the influencer and the deceptor. She then becomes the influencer and the deceptor to Adam. Hey, Adam, I took it. I didn't die. Here you go. You eat it now. We see in the text that it says that Adam was with her. He wasn't in some far corner of the garden, you know, plucking berries or something. He wasn't away from her tending the garden. He was right there. He had full knowledge of what was happening. He didn't come along um, at the end of the day, come home to his wife Eve where she was preparing a meal and that fruit was just on the plate. All right? He was present with her and he did not stop her. His failure was to exercise his headship and eating the fruit, he committed the sin against the Lord and causing mankind to be cursed. There is a difference between Adam and Eve's sin. 
right? The verses um, really show the limit of Satan's power. Uh, he is the great tempter, the great influencer, right? A lot of people use, oh, like, there are people out there that have that job of influencer, right? <clears throat> um, we see here, Satan is the father of that job. Um, he is the great influencer, the one who from the beginning was trying to get man, trying to influence man to transgress the commands of God. Um, but that's where his power stops right there. Cut bait. He's done. His power stops at influencing man. Satan cannot force man, mankind to actually transgress the Lord, to break his commands. That is a choice that we make. That is not something Satan can force us. Oh, I did it because the devil made me do it. No, he cannot make you do anything. This is a choice. His power stops at tempting us to do things. And there is a slight difference between Eve's sin and Adam's sin. Um, let's take a couple of verses that expound on this. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 13-14. through 14. For Adam was formed first, then Eve. <clears throat> Adam was not deceived, but the woman was deceived and became the transgressor. There's a difference there. You see it? Uh, another verse here, 2 Corinthians 11, verse 3, which reads, But I am afraid that as the serpent deceived Eve by his cunning, your thoughts will be led astray from a sincere and pure devotion to Christ. The point of these two verses, twice it states that Eve was deceived. However, the Timothy passage goes on to say that Adam was not deceived. He sinned in full knowledge. For Adam, this was an act of pure rebellion. For Eve, this was deception. She was deceived. She bought into the lie that Satan told her. Adam didn't. Adam knew what was going on and yet he still acted in rebellion.